Hi, I'm Lee Hart with Cowboy Logic Horsemanship. I'm really excited about the shows that we're going to bring to you. What you can look forward to in these shows is we're going to have a series called Factor Fiction, where we're going to go out and we're going to find common myths about horses, and we're going to either prove or disprove them. I'm really excited about this segment. It's something different that nobody else offers. We're also going to show you some new young and upcoming riders that have been in my program and that are having a little bit of success with the things that they're doing. We're going to show you how I go about starting a colt, saddling a colt for the first time and the first ride, and we're going to kind of follow him through this series so you can see how he is the first day, two weeks in, a month, and we'll just keep rolling on and keep updating you on, on this horse's progress. Some other things that we're going to do is show you some different opportunities that you can do with your horses or things that I do with my horses that will kind of back up my history with the horse. We're also going to go out on the ranch and we're going to show you what working on a ranch is like and we're going to go to some of the WRCA rodeos this year which I've set out for for a couple years and we're also rodeoing in them this year so we're really excited about we're going to show you some footage from the Working Ranch Cowboys Association rodeos. And then we'll also have some EXCA races, just some ideas for people to get out there and do some other things with their horses. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you're moving forward with your horse, not just getting stale. Welcome to Cowboy Logic, and look forward to riding with you. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org join to learn more. Fort Wallace was the fightingest fort in the West. Fossils, Indians, soldiers, scouts, wagons, trails, pioneers, stories. Discover the story of Fort Wallace and the people who served here, the people who fought here, the people who settled here. Wallace County, where the past is present. Cowboy Logic Horsemanship is located in Topeka, Kansas at Arrow H Stables, the old Toucher Racetrack facility. We uh, have been here for five years and we've been really concentrating on performance horses over the last five years. We also offer lessons here at Arrow H Stables and this year was the first year that we formed our Cowboy Logic team. We have an actual team and an online team. We're really excited about that. There's about 40 members all total. We meet once a month on Wednesdays, and uh, we just work on growing our horsemanship, developing our relationships with our horses, and making sure that we can be a powerful, positive leader. I'm really excited about the shows that we're going to bring to you. Over the years, I've been very blessed to ride lots of good horses. My experience with horses started back when I uh, was three years old. I was on my first horse and riding in a parade. I started my first colt at 11, and throughout the years I've worked in ranches and feed yards. I've worked for a cutting horse trainer for a while, and I've started lots of horses throughout the time. I've developed a common sense approach to horsemanship that has been very successful for me. Luckily, we've been uh, in the show pen a lot, and between world and reserve world championships, we're sitting at 18 right now. Um, I've competed in 
ranch rodeos, PRCA rodeos, also the Extreme Cowboy Race Association. And I've just been very fortunate enough to have horses that bless my talent throughout the years. I uh, travel throughout the U.S. and I perform about 43 to 45 clinics a year, just depending on the year. A lot of those over are over just general horsemanship and how to get your horses confident over obstacles. When we come back, I'm going to introduce you to my pre-flight checklist for warming up your horse. Stay tuned. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas. Howdy folks, it's time to saddle up for a brand new television series called Cowboy Up, a celebration of the American Cowboy. Our show will feature the very finest in Western musicians and cowboy poets for your enjoyment. We'll explore Western music, meet these performers up close and personal, and enjoy their performance of music and rhyme. This is Cowboy Poet Lariat Ron Wilson inviting you to join me as we cowboy up. Happy trails. Welcome to the Jerry Thomas Gallery and Collection, where we showcase my renowned frontier military and Native American artifacts. Behind me you see a touch of fall. We put together not only the beauty of Micah High Walking, who is the first graduate of West Point of the Northern Cheyenne people and a dear friend, but also a Hudson's Bay blanket that I have here in the gallery. The unique opportunity that I was able to have was we unveiled this painting and surprised Micah at Custer Battlefield, a true honor. In this segment, we're going to talk about warming up your horse. I'm going to give you a pre-flight checklist just to run through and make sure that your horse is with you. Remember, to get our horses to focus, we have to get their feet moving. A horse is rhythmically balanced, and they need to establish rhythm to truly start processing and thinking. And when I say rhythmically balanced, I mean all four feet are moving in unison. We need the horse to loosen up and start thinking and flowing around here. Most people, when they get on their horse, the first thing they do is they start to back the horse up. That is actually exactly wrong. When you first crawl on a horse, you don't want to back them up because what happens is you'll start getting that horse to be cinchy or bronchy or anything like that. A horse needs to move forward and establish rhythm of the feet and then through redirecting body parts, we'll get our horses to be focused on us. So as I said here, I'm just going to start right down through. Number one on my list is just to soften my horse and make sure she's with me. And if I bring her around, I'm just lifting straight up on the rein. My legs are off of her. I'm just asking her to bend a little bit here. And when she comes off of that and finds the slack, all four feet are still, I'll release. So I'm just going to soften her both ways and make sure she's here. If she had left me, I'd stay there until I got it. But she kind of says, all right. And I want to just be able to bend her around. I don't want her nose all the way to my leg. I just want to make sure that when I pull on that bridle that everything's all right. All right. So number two on our checklist is as, is as I ask her to walk off, I'm going to start redirecting the hip. You will notice that everything I'm doing here at first I'm going to lift on that left rein, add that left leg, and push that hip around. She should move around her front end. Then I'm just going to walk off. Then I'm going to change to the other side. I'm going to lift on the right rein, right leg. I'm going to push that hip around until that front end kind of settles down there. And then I'm just going to release and walk off. And I'm going to work on getting her to be confident in what I'm asking her to do here. So number three on our list when we keep going is I'm going to start adding parts into this. So I'll start off just like I did. I'll go left rein, left leg, and I'll push that hip around. But now I'm going to take my left leg off and I'm going to add the right leg. And I'm going to step the shoulders through. And I'll do this from the greenest of horse, like a first or second ride horse, all the way to my very most finished horses. Now I'm going to go right rein, right leg, push that hip around, disengage the hip, now right leg off and add the left leg and step the shoulders through. 
you notice these first exercises, I'm just making sure my horse is with me. I'm making sure that he's soft laterally before I ever ask him to flex vertically. The next part of our checklist is going to be to disengage the hip. All of these just flow together. And now I'm just going to spread my hands out low and wide and I'm going to ask my horse to back. If he kind of hangs right there, I'm just going to kind of move my legs. We have to remember that our horses are rhythmically balanced. And with our horses being rhythmically balanced, if we can kind of get a nice rhythm on their side, they can't help themselves but to start moving them feet at that rhythm. The one problem with that is if you start pulling more with your reins. We always have to remember our reins are a guide. So now I'm going to go right rein right leg. I'm going to push that hip around till it's flowing nice. And then I'm going to spread those hands out low and wide and ask my horse to back. So for me, these exercises, they may take, you know, five minutes. They may take two minutes or they may take 30 minutes. It depends on where our horse is that day. And it doesn't matter where we start with a horse. It only matters where we finish with the horse. That's the most important thing to always remember. They do not start in the same spot every day. It's up to us to help our horses to focus and come to us. It's not their responsibility to focus and come to us. It's up to us to help our horses through their problems. Coming up, don't miss our fact or fiction section. This week we're covering green on green. Does it equal black and blue? Should a rider and horse learn together? I will give you my opinion when we return. This is one of my favorite bits that I make. The name I give this bit is a derby bit. I had a roan head horse that was running through the bridle with the chain bit, and I made this bit here. It, it, it really worked good on that horse. I sent this bit to Donnie McNeese, who breaks in cattle for Jeff Smith and Ike's Cox, and I said, ride this bit on a lot of horses, see how you get along with it. They did. He said, bull, that's really a good bit. It fits a lot of horses. Then I give this bit to my good friend, Brent Wright, who I make bits for. And I said, see how this bit will work on a reining horse. I call him up a couple months later. I said, Brent, how you getting along with that bit? And he said, good. He said, you don't need it right this minute, do you? And I said, no. He said, good, because I'm down here in Texas and I just want a big fraturity riding that bit. And when Brent got home, he gave me the buckle that he won the fraturity with. I'm, I'm really proud of that buckle that Brent Wright gave it to me, and also that he got along so good with my bit. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. Trust and leadership are critical to success at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center in Manhattan. Just ask Coach Bill Snyder. People of the Regenerative Center do care about others. I've been highly impressed with those people that have that vested interest and in try to help people become better. The center really is a, a wonderful thing here in Manhattan, first of its kind. We're on the cutting edge of what lies ahead. Find out more about the trusted leader in stem cell therapy at KansasRMC.com. Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. This week on Fact or Fiction, we're going to address green horses and green riders. The old wise tale is to buy a green horse and let a rider learn how to ride on that horse. The truth of the matter is, over the years I've seen hundreds of examples where this absolutely does not work. To me, that is like 
your 16-year-old kid getting his driver's license and going out and buying a Dodge Viper. This is one of the most absurd things I've ever heard. I'm not saying that this does not work occasionally. It will work if the horse has the right disposition and the rider has a little bit of experience. But for the most part, I have seen this end disastrously over the years. I've seen more riders quit riding over this combination. The best advice I could give any person is do not be afraid of that 15 to 25 year old horse that has life experience. Number one, life experience makes up for disposition a lot of times. A good broke horse will help teach your kid how to ride. A green horse will help teach your kid how to doubt themselves. When we come back, we're going to show you the groundwork that I think is essential in preparing a colt to get ready for a saddle. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Lee Hart, and this is Thug. He's a two-year-old, um, just barely halter broke. He's had a halter on like four times. We're preparing him here to get the first saddling on and probably the first ride. We're gonna just keep kind of rolling forward. My, my style of groundwork, I do not do anything that doesn't transfer into the saddle. So everything I do as we're working here is gonna transfer over into the saddle. And we'll just kind of keep asking him, is this okay? And we'll push him up there until he says no, and then we'll back up and then we'll just push back up there and we'll just keep getting him ready and we'll roll on. For me, first and foremost, is the first thing I'm gonna do in the saddle is to disengage his hips. So I wanna make sure that he's focused. I'm gonna step back here. I'm gonna lift my hand up like it'd be if I was uh, in the saddle. And I'm just gonna push that hip around. Seems like he's remembering that really well. I'm just gonna check both sides real quick and make sure that he's thinking. You can see how he's crossing over that inside hind leg, over that outside hind leg. And I just want to make sure that he's with me and thinking. And I'll just roll him around here and just keep pushing that hip. So the next thing that I'm going to introduce to him is I'm going to ask the shoulders to step through. So I'm just going to point, step the direction I'm going, and then push him out. You could see that the first thing that cleared out in a way was the shoulders, and then he gave me his hip, and now I just push him around me. As I'm working him, I'm watching that inside front foot. And I'm just driving him forward, making sure he's keeping his nose tilted into me here. Now I'm gonna ask him to disengage his hips. So I'm going right back up there where my hand would be if I was in the saddle, push it around. Now I'm gonna point, step, send him out the other way. I like to stay in really close at this stage to a horse because I want it to simulate if I was riding him. So in tighter is going to be a little more claustrophobic for him and I might find some of the holes before I start getting him ready to saddle. So right now what I'm truly working on is just sensitizing these feet. And what I mean by sensitizing is when I ask them to move, I want them to move at the speed I'm asking and the direction I'm asking. So like here I'm asking the hip to move away. Now I'm going to point and step, send them shoulders through and push him around me. This should look like that's okay. He's going to make mistakes. Just don't be too critical of him and send him back out there. I'm going to point, step, and let him figure it out. I'll help him just a little more. He's just getting stuck, and that's okay. He's green. Like I said, this is the fourth or fifth time he's had a halter on. We'll just work with him. We'll stay slow and easy, and we'll just keep helping him through here. So where this exercise that we're working on right now, the hips and shoulders exercise, is going to come into play. When I first saddle him, when I first saddle him, he is going to be uh, a little unsure of it. So I need to be able to help him and bring him back to something he's confident in to help him through that. I just don't want to kick him 
And like right there, he kind of come into my space, that's fine. I raised my hand, he ran into my arm. Now he knows, respect my space. That was pretty nice compared to what would happen if he had done that to his mother or another horse. They would have kicked or bit him. I just kind of let him know, nope, that's my space. So after we've kind of moved him around and we've established some rhythm of them feet, I'm going to rub on him a little bit, start touching everywhere I can. Now we're to that desensitizing part of the thing. I just want to rub him, make sure I don't have any holes, spots that he thinks are too sensitive to touch. You can see he's, he's got a leg cocked there. That's a good thing. That's a sign that he's relaxing a little bit. I'm kind of making sure to get on both sides of him here. I want him to know when I ask you to move, you need to move. If he needs to move off there, I'll just bring his head to me and rub him to a stop. He's doing really good so far. We've had four other works on him, kind of working on getting him where he's a little bit halter broke. He's still not real great, but he tries to be pretty soft and pretty nice. Just walk off back to the center here. Anytime I feel him really starting to drag, I don't want to turn it into a tug of war. I'm just going to redirect them feet. The easy thing needs to be to come with me or stay with me. So I'll just keep pushing him around here. And we'll just work on getting those feet freed up. I'll do a little bit of sensitization. That means get those feet moving. He's still a little wanting to hang as we go to the right. I'm just going to stay here till he figures it out. Good. And then we'll come back and we'll desensitize him just a little bit. I like to use a flag. I don't sneak with it. I'm pretty, pretty out there in front of his face with everything. I'm not going to sneak around a horse. I'll allow him. If he needs to move here, he can move. I'm just going to keep bringing that nose to me. And I'll just keep that pressure there until he comes still, cocks a leg, shows a sign of relaxing. Right there it is. Really, really good. You can see he's still a little bit postured up there with his head and his neck. That's fine. We're going to come back. We'll just kind of move it a little bit. There he kind of let loose. And then we'll rub him. I think it's really important to be able to touch these horses about anywhere before you start trying to crawl on their back. You don't want to get up on his back and figure out that rubbing his rump is the buck button. So we're just going to keep adding it. He's doing really good. If he needs to move, he can move. I'm not going to discourage it, but I am going to encourage by giving him a release when he stands still and is polite and soft and shows a sign of relaxation. I'll take that pressure away. Like right now, he's kind of just postured up a little bit. He may need to move in it. That's all good. He's allowed to make mistakes. I'm not too worried about it if he does. That's how we learn. There we go. I'm just going to walk off here. Just keep asking him, is this okay? Good. I don't want him to think of a flag as a weapon. I just want him to think of it as a tool or something we've used to help desensitize him a little bit. So this would be about his fourth day around a flag too. And if he needed to really react, that's fine. We'd let him. I'll just keep bringing that nose to me. When I get pretty comfortable that he's taking that flag good, I won't stay there and just keep picking on him or torturing him with it. I'll just get rid of it. He seems like he's handling it pretty good. You know, every time I move away from him, I either disengage the hip or I send the shoulders. It's also really important you need to keep your tools picked up. That way you don't end up tripping on them in the round pin. I'm just going to ask him around here. Good. And ask him to come with me. As soon as that rope gets tied, I'm either going to send the front end or redirect the hip. I want him coming with me on a loose rein.
That's getting better, got tight, so I'm gonna redirect him. I don't want a bag one to lead. I want the, the leading. He was kind of getting a little sticky footed, so I had to add a little more energy. That's fine. All right, so we know when I get on him, I need him to be able to soften. I need to be able to flip things around him. So I'm just going to step in here and I'm going to ask him to bend. He's starting to really catch on to that. He's wanting to be soft and nice. I want to rub him everywhere that I can. If he needs to move there, we'll just bend him to a stop. Just move with him. It's going to be really common for him to try to go left, try to go right, go up with his head, down with his head, until he comes, figures out the right answer. You shouldn't discourage that progression. You should help him to find the right answer. Ask him to soften here. If he needs to move, I'll just keep stepping with him. Really good. You'll notice that my reins are loose a lot. I don't want to beg him to stay with me. There we go. I remember that he learns from a release, so when he does the right thing, I for sure want to give him a big old release and let him know, great job. So he's gotten pretty comfortable with me pitching that lead over the top of him. I'll pitch it around here, see if I can catch it. There we go. I'm going to add a little pressure at the cinch. And what I would do, if he needed to move, I'd push that hip around away from me. So we'll go again here. There we go. Kind of wanted to get sticky, so I'm going to redirect him. Disengage his hip. I don't want him to think that we're going to do one thing and rest. Do one thing and rest. I want him to think more like he thinks. And horses are natural dancers, so they do series of things. So as I disengage that hip and I step to him, I want to have some rhythm as I'm doing it. He's taken all that really, really well. Next time, I'll show you how I introduce the saddle and put the first ride on this colt. Thanks for joining us on Cowboy Logic. I'm Lee Hart. If you would like more information, you're welcome to go to my website, leehearttraining.com, or shoot us a message on Facebook. Till next time, go out and grab your horse, and let's give it a good old Cowboy Logic try.